As promised, here is an updated China video. Buckle up folks, going to keep it short and sweet with no punches pulled. As I go through this, ask yourself why this is not a topic number one anytime someone's talking about climate change. First and foremost, China is the world leader by a huge margin in greenhouse gas emissions. And the majority of this happened after the connection between temperature and the climate was well established. So when history on the topic is it discussed, I, it baffles me why this is left out. Next, their carbon intensity is close to double the world average because of coal. Does anyone not know that coal is a big CO2 emitter? And there have been alternate choices since the year 2000. China has used as its get out of jail free card that it's a developing country. Yet at the same time, developing countries are going to be the ones worst hit by temperature rise. If the rule is that all developing countries can act like China, let's just accept that it's going to be a pretty hot world in the future. And when it comes time to assign blame, I know where I'm pointing the finger. Another excuse that is made is that they are growing solar and EVs faster than anyone and promise to stop increasing emissions by 2030. So they are actually a role model. So let me see, if a person puts solar on their house and decides to go with a coal-fired furnace to heat it, they're a role model? Not in my view. Going forward. Stop talking about the past. Let's talk going forward. If China increases its wind, solar, nuclear power usage 2% every year, and their economy grows 4% every year, their emissions will level out, but they will not drop. If you got that number instead of 2% improvement to 5% new capability every year, emissions would drop by about 3% annually. Given at the really high point they're at today, at a 3% drop annually, they're going to be the number one problem for quite some time. They are actually likely to stop increasing sooner than 2030, but that's because they're suffering economic growth issues. Another big problem is shipping. It's a big emissions problem that everyone leaves off the books when talking about it, because it's a tough one to solve. And who is resisting efforts more than anyone else in this area? China. I have a whole video on that coming up. When faced with a slowing economy and bills for renewables and EVs that require a lot of upfront dollars, do you have confidence based on their rhetoric and track record, that they're gonna keep going full speed ahead. I know my thoughts. So here's how they land on the climate scorecard. I look forward to being proven wrong. The only reason it's even this high is I do give them credit for decent plans for the future. More important than even China is that this is an amazing example of why developing countries need to constrain their growth so that their improvements in carbon intensity are exceeding or at least matching their growth rate. There. I just said what anyone who's looked at the data knows, but no one wants to say. I think now is when I should say like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe, maybe not. Even if we want to talk history, the Western world took many decades to develop. It's unrealistic to expect that we'll have the time it takes and not have consequences. At the next COP conference, this topic, growth and its relationship to carbon intensity, needs to be focused on. Until it does, just stop holding those conferences. They're a waste of time. 
So, with that, look forward to talking to you all again. Take care. Major signing off.